Claudio Maguete. Hello, Negros Oriental. Hello, Silimanians around the world. This is Joshua Soldivillo. And this is Ronnie Lynn Faith by Losses. You're watching Hashtag Silliman. For Hashtag Silliman updates, Silliman University ranked third in the June 2022 Physical Therapist Licensure Examinations list of top performing schools with 20 or more examinees passed and with at least 80% overall passing percentage and produce 17 licensed physical therapists. Congratulations! The university also produced six certified public accountants based on the list of passers of the May 2022 Certified Public Accountant Licensure Examination that's released by the Professional Regulation Commission. Keep up the good work! Meanwhile, Outstanding Silimanian Awardee Miguel C. Braganza II was recently named by the Hiraya Foundation for Filipino American Heritage Preservation Incorporated as one of the qualifying winners of the first Gawad Alab ng Lahi Parangal sa Natatanging Ambag ng Isang Individual Award for the Outstanding Contribution of an Individual last May 30, 2022. Braganza is being cited for organizing Tanghalang Filipino for Filipino Americans residing in Washington, D.C., Virginia, and Maryland, which is the first of an array of endeavors to set up platforms to discover, develop, and display Filipino talents in the arts. Silliman University and International Christian University of Tokyo, Japan, held a virtual signing ceremony of a Memorandum of Agreement and that renewed the SUICU exchange program for service learning on May 23, 2022 via Zoom. The Suleiman University ICU exchange program is a four-week service learning exchange program between Suleiman University and ICU that integrates the Japan Summer Service Learning Program held between July and August every year. Good luck and enjoy the journey. That would be all. See you next week for another set of Hashtag Cinnamon Updates. Good evening everyone. This is a magazine program that talks about different aspects of Silliman University. A program initiated to discuss matters concerning the campus by the sea. Welcome to Hashtag, Hashtag Silliman. Mayong gabi isa tanan. Welcome to another episode of Hashtag Silliman. And we thank you for the warm support. And we thank you for making Hashtag Silliman as your official Monday night habit. It's already the middle of, of the month of June. And happy birthday to our June babies. May you have prosperity, love, and all the joy. And happy the birthday, things. Josh. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm greeting them because it's my <laughs> birthday month. But this also means that we are about to embark another academic school year. That's academic year 2022 to 2023. And aside from STEM courses, business courses, there are also other tracks and career opportunities that our students may pursue. And I'm talking about the College of Art Sciences, particularly Social Sciences and the Humanities. Joining us tonight are faculty members and chairpersons of the selected department from the College of Arts and Sciences. Allow me to introduce first ang tagapangulo ng kagawaran ng Filipino at mga banyagang wika, Assistant Professor Jenaline A. Orellana. Ma, magandang gabi po at maraming salamat sa um, malugod na pangtanggap naming imbitasyon. Magandang gabi din, Josh at Ron. Salamat sa imbitasyon. Okay. Parang mapapasubo ako sa Tagalog nito, <laughs> Joshua. Ay, Ron, hanggang doon lang, hanggang doon lang kaya ko. <laughs> okay, we also have here with us the faculty member of the History and Falsai Depart Department of the College of Arts and Sciences. Let us all welcome Assistant Professor John Barry and Nico. Good Hi. afternoon, sir. Hello. Good evening, sir. Good evening. And of course, we have the chairperson of the Sociology and Anthropology Department, none other than Assistant Professor Christine S. Batilis. Ma'am, good evening and welcome to the program. Mayong gabi sa tanan. So let me ask the first question. Let me drop the bomb already. What are the common misconceptions about uh, when enrolling or about your chosen field or discipline? Like for example, what's a common misconception when it comes to enrolling um, sa Filipino department po? Um, sa aking palagay, um, palaging sinasabi ang katagang ito, Filipino ra. Ito yung mm. talagang mm. halos sinasabi ng lahat at parang nakakalungkot lang na 
tayo mismo mga Pilipino ay may ganitong negatibong pananaw hinggil sa Filipino at lalong-lalo na sa kurso na AB Filipino. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yun lang po. So, kumbaga mayroong ano ba ito, Ron? There's there's this um inferiority. Inferiority. No? But later of course, we'll be talking about the um, career opportunities, no? Yes. Of course. Uh, how about I'm I'm curious also in history and political science courses, do you also get to hear some misconceptions about the course? Yeah, a lot. Actually, um, oftentimes we're associated with the quote-unquote dumping ground, mm. or if not, the course where the easiest subjects are, you know, are located, which mm. is kind of misguided because we do have some things in the programs that are very challenging. Yeah, mm-hmm. Ron, I can rem- I can still remember I'm um, studying the Philippine Constitution. <laughs> that course itself is very yeah. challenging, no? Um, how about for the social and anthrodep uh, courses, Ma'am Tien? Actually, um, Ma'am Gina and Sir Barry already mentioned, we also experienced that. But another, I guess, uh, biggest misconception most of the time from mm-hmm. students, uh, they don't really understand what anthropology and sociology Disciplines are, they don't know, they don't have any understanding about okay. uh, our discipline. So basically, from the start, they don't, uh, they don't have any idea at all yeah. why they are there even sometimes. Mm-mm. So that's it. So it's so unfortunate to hear this misconception, right. Joshna. And I think it's rooting from the fact that we, uh, when we don't understand something, it's, uh, it's easy for us to judge, mm. um, to give judgment or prejudice about it. Yeah. Now, how do you address these misconceptions, especially for the Filipino? Um, hindi naman natin maiiwasan na ganoon ang mga pananaw. Ngunit, um, lubos kong maipagmamalaki ang performance ng aming mga estudyante lalong lalo na kami ay service unit ng College of Education mm-hmm. kung saan um, may mga estudyante kami na nagpapakadalubhasa sa Filipino. Sila yung mga um, BS Ed students at mm-hmm. ang mga estudyante ito ay hindi lamang mga simpleng estudyante kundi meron din silang mga um, achievements mm-hmm. outside the Filipino program. So, um, hindi ko ikinakahiya ang aming programa sapagkat ang aming mga estudyante ay may sarili ding ang king talino at kakayahan. How, mm, maraming salamat po. Uh, how about Sir John? Um, in our case, since we deal a lot with human relations, we tend to make that person more well-developed. We encourage that person to you know, to boost his capability even more if we feel that, you know, that person is displaying negativity, we try to uplift his spirits, uh, that sort of thing. We aspire to make each and every individual a capable leader, especially Mm -hmm. since we are marketing ourselves as versatile. I'm Christine. Yeah, in our part, it's really quite difficult to sometimes change the perspectives of others. Mm-mm. But we do try our best, especially trying to understand first uh, where that person comes from Mm-mm. and what does that person really want with his or her life. Mm-hmm. So that's where we come in and try our best, definitely. Uh, as years go by, perhaps, hopefully, we'll be able to change the perspective. Sometimes we do. Mm-hmm. Because those people graduated, mm-hmm. but sometimes uh, some of those who came to the department thinking that they can actually finish mm-hmm. because it's just an easy mm-hmm. course, but unfortunately, after a year or so, they also transferred, shifted to another course because they find it difficult. difficult. So mm-hmm. that's the time that they will know that sociology and anthropology are courses that are actually quite difficult Mm-mm. and challenging. Mm-mm. Right. So, uh, hearing all of these misconceptions and um, I guess um, we would say misguided impressions. No? Um, so, what are now then the relevance of, of let's say, being, being a graduate of um, AB Filipino, of uh, AB History or Political Science, of Sociology and Anthropology? How relevant are you, let's say, in the talks of pandemic, in the talks of climate change, even in peace and order, or even to say 
um, cultural progress. No? So, um, what, what is the role? No? Kung baga, ano po yung um, papel na ginagampanan ng mga um, tum nagtatapos ng halimbawa ng AB Filipino? Kasi pagsasabihin natin na sila ay kumukuha ng AB Filipino, hindi lamang ito tungkol sa pagpapakadalubhasa o pag-aaral ng wika or wikang Filipino lamang, kundi natatalakay din dito ang hinggil sa kultura, mm. sa pagiging isang bansa. Dahil palagi nating sinasabi na ang wika ay sumasalamin sa kultura ng ating bansa. So sa pamamagitan nito, ang aming mga estudyante ay naihahanda namin upang maging isang kapaki-pakinabang at responsabling mamamayan ng ating bansa. So um, sila ay may um, kakayahan na um, maki makisama o makibahagi sa anumang mga isyong panlipunan. At marahil sila ay posibleng magiging bahagi ng mga solusyon ng mga isyong kinakaharap ng ating komunidad at maging ng ating bansa. Ibig sabihin, Rona, na Filipino is not only confined no, to the study of the lang la as a language, yeah. but mm -hmm. even up to some cultural aspects. Yes. How about for the, the history and political science, or say, in the discussions right now of, let's say, in the age of disinformation, misinformation, mm -hmm. malinformation, uh, how do your courses make sense to these issues? Well, um, first of all, the department uh, recently hosted a symposium about um, facing facing fake news or it's something about historical revisionism which is unfortunately very prevalent in social media today mm -mm. so our department is there to rectify and to try and change some of these people who are into into um social media but not fact checking mm. what is going on because um as part of history paul say and even in the arts and sciences we are guardians of truth so research, truth, those are some of the values that we keep uh, dear to our department. So mm -hmm. as much as possible, uh, we do tend to emphasize research and fact, and of course, how to apply this in our community. Mm -mm. That's mm -mm. for us. Thank what for social anthropom? Let's say um, in, in other issues that you, you, mm -hmm. may to, you may want to connect your courses. Actually, um, Ma'am Gina and Sir Barry already mentioned it. Siguro, uh, for anthropology majors and sociology majors, it will be an exciting time to apply our discipline, mm -hmm. especially with so many issues and problems that we are encountering. Uh, we are a very broad discipline, uh, anthropology and also sociology. Mm -hmm. So we deal with so many things uh, regarding society and culture. Mm -mm. and specifically social problems that we experience from the environment because it deals with human beings and with the things happening with our country right now. Mm -hmm. Definitely, if you try to look into social media, there are a lot of anthropologists and sociologists that are actually also trying to put their minds and trying to impart what they actually understand about our society and culture. So especially, for example, realities. Mm -mm. How we deal with realities and why is it that there are so many realities, for example, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the concept of revisionism and distortion. Mm -mm. Why do people believe in uh, that particular reality? Well, in fact, there are proven facts, a lot of facts out there. Why is it that people cannot accept that? Mm -mm. So uh, what, what are they thinking, actually? So how can we understand these people and where do they come from? Mm -mm. And how these realities were actually created? Who is responsible for this? Uh, for example, technology, the importance of technology. It's a two-way process. Technology helps us in our lives, but sometimes there's also that question whether technology can also dictate our lives. Mm -mm. So anthropologists and sociologists, uh, we are interested in knowing more about that and especially uh, through the use of research actually uh, we can somehow impart certain solution perhaps that can uh, let's try to use the word enlighten mm -mm. our society uh, that's what we hope for actually okay. to enlighten everyone right ron before you ask uh, your question i'd just like to expand on that discussion because let's say um accountants you know in our economy they 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 play a very big role 
engineers, you, you see their product, they build bridges, they, big, they build infrastructures, say teachers, they give these diplomas, no? they train and mold individuals. But in your uh, particular fields, where are you in, in this scenario? Where are you in this, um, um, let's say, socii societal issues and challenges? Uh, maybe you can start, Mamtin. Where are anthropologists and sociologists in the talks, say, of climate change, for example? Because when we will just uh, focus on the science aspect, sometimes we miss things because we will try to look into the problem about mm -hmm. the, the actual problem, for example, the, pol the pollution. But sometimes we tend to forget that the reason why pollution exists is because some people are doing it. Uh, it is because they have no choice at all. Ah. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the human aspect there is also very important. To have a better solution, we just don't say, oh, we, we have to stop this immediately. This, mm -hmm. this kind of problem or this kind of activity will lead to the creation of a problem. But think, if you will stop people from cutting trees, what will happen to those people? Mm -hmm. Right. So we have to understand the human side first before we can actually look into the better solution. Because if we'll just deal with the problem, like stop this. Yeah we cannot actually have a much more sustainable uh, we cannot have a sustainable answer to okay. things if we will not again look into the human side of all the problems that we experience in the world today and practically this is where sociology and anthropology yeah, exactly. how, how comes yeah. in right yeah. how about for you sir where are the political scientists and historians right now in our society mm -mm. right now in our society we are we're actually recording what's mm -hmm. going on and of course by taking notes of what's going on around the world, mm -hmm. we can actually learn from what we did wrong or what's going to be the correct um, solution. But other than that, we're here to develop the policy, mm -hmm. especially when our lawmakers tend to make um, some measures in, like let's say stopping this pandemic or making better solutions in our environment, we need we need policies that are actually friendly to people mm -hmm. and of course given um, given my field maybe research why we need these policies in the first place very mm -hmm. important sa larangan naman po ng <laughs> pag-aaral ng ating wikang Filipino the transition nasa, is really real so <laughs> from english to filipino nasaan po ba ito sa pagharap natin sa mga problema Dahil sa binagong curriculum ng AB Filipino ay bahagi na ang professional education subjects, kaya ang ating mga AB Filipino graduates ay pwede nang makakuha ng LET. So, maaari na silang makapagturo kahit wala pa silang um, uh, masters, maaari silang makapagturo sa sekundarya. So, technically, ang ating mga AB Filipino graduates ay magiging mga guro. Wow. Sa aking palagay ay sa pamamagitan ng edukasyon ay mahuhubog natin ang mga isipan at damdamin ng ating mga estudyante, ng ating mga kabataang Pilipino. Mm -mm. At syempre, um, ang ating paghubog sa kanila ay tungo sa positibong pagbabago na hindi na yung base lamang sa kung ano ang kanilang nababasa sa social media, kundi uh, maiwasan na rin ang fake news, ang mm -mm. pagpapaniwala sa mga fake news. So, mm -mm. naihahanda natin ang ating mga mag-aaral, ang mga mamamayan na maging matalino mm -hmm. at mapili sa kung anuman ang kanilang mga binabasa o pinapanood. Nang sa ganoon ay magkaroon sila ng um, parabang direksyon, yung mm -mm. positibong direksyon. So, kung anuman ang kanilang uh, larangan na tatahakin ay guided sila. Mm -hmm. So, Sa aking palagay, yun ang maitutulong ng um, programang ito sa ating mga kabataan at sa mga mamamayan ng ating bansa. Maraming salamat, Pinibining Jinaline. Right. We still need to take a break, but uh, when we come back, we'll be talking about what are the career opportunities, mm -hmm. right? So stay with us. Hashtag Silman will be back.
Welcome back. You're still watching Hashtag Silliman. So before we took a short, a short break, we actually asked um, about the career opportunities no? our mm -hmm. students can actually um, explore in the future. Earlier, Binibining Jinaline um, said that AB Filipino can be teachers um, um, in the near future. Now, how about social anthro graduates and history, historica, history and policy? For anthropology and sociology graduates, uh, well, the very obvious uh, track will be the academic as well. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be teaching as well, uh, different levels, siguro college most likely, senior high. Uh, we have a uh, few uh, students graduated from our department who are actually teaching in senior high. Mm -hmm. uh, research, if you are interested in pursuing research career also. If not in the academ, siguro, we also have students who ventured into business, mm -hmm. who are using their knowledge in anthropology and sociology in understanding also the business aspect. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And many also went into public service, uh, working right. with government and also in different NGOs. For mm -hmm. example, we also have a, a graduate who is currently uh, attached with an environmental NGO. Mm -mm. And she's uh, dealing with the community aspect of that NGO. Mm -mm. Uh, if you want to be, or if you want, uh, if you have some sort of interest in the arts as well, uh, anthropology could be also a very good mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. discipline for you. So it, it's actually eclectic. Uh, in our discipline, because it's really very broad, so we give you an opportunity. How will you use what you have learned as an anthropologist and sociologist mm -hmm. to find your way into the world? Mm -hmm. So you make your own path. That's now actually the current uh, yeah. uh, new thing. It's not uh, the, 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 the work that will look for you. It's you who will actually carve your path and try to see where you will really fit in with mm -hmm. your discipline. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Ma'am Tin. How about you, Sir John? What are the career opportunities for our history and political science graduates? Well, for our history and policy graduates, I dare say the possibilities are endless. In fact, let me quote one of my former professors and my mentor and current um, colleague. He told me right before I graduated, you can be whoever you can be because we are very very versatile here in the history pulsi and lo and behold that's since 2007 fast forward to 2022 here i am siliman university um in the field of career opportunities many of our graduates tend to focus on uh law mm. they also enter into politics in mm -hmm. fact our current um, mayor, Mayor Ipi is a graduate of history policy. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. history and political science. And also, we also have several businessmen, uh, prominent businessmen in this city, who started out or graduated in history policy and now are success. Um, there are also lawmakers, um, not just from here but all across um, Negros and even beyond. Um, they're pretty much everywhere, and that's something I can be proud of, of our department. Um, we, may, we may seem to be the underdog, but we actually are very progressive. Paano naman po sa ating mga mag-aaral na nakatapos ng AB Filipino? Ano po yung mga nag-aabang na oportunidad sa kanila? Tulad ng aking nabanggit kanina, maari silang maging guro, maaring manunulat, mga editors, at um, meron din kami mga graduates na nasa BPO companies na dahil meron ng mga Tagalog accounts. So maraming mga oportunidad sa AB Filipino program. Mm -mm. Josh, I have been meaning to ask mm. because um, Sir John mentioned a while ago about the historical revisionism. Yeah. How about, what is your thought or what is your, um, what can you say about people saying that past is past, we must forget and forgive? Um, there's no such thing because history is very brutal. You must remember history, but 
you learn from it. Okay? You don't just remember and then spew hate and then remember and then indicate this and that. You must remember, learn from that mistake, and then move on. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the better solution for you know, understanding history. Ayan, Ron. So possible yeah. palang mag, ano, Ron? You don't forget, but you can move on. Yes. Yeah, okay. um, <laughs> parang hugot, but uh, <laughs> sometimes it's better not to not to nag all the time when it you know with things that happened in the past yeah it's very important to learn from your mistakes and then move on mm. uh, just like dory said just keep swimming <laughs> keep swimming yeah, keep, keep swimming. swimming so i also um these days these in this information age um people are so engrossed with technology now i'd like to ask um ma'am christine how does sociology and anthropology oh, yeah. help us understand the relationship between humans and technology is it that um is it um is it true that technology controls humans or humans should control technology something like that how long do we have <laughs> okay. That is um, a very complex, actually, question. Uh, first and foremost, human beings, we are responsible for creating technology mm -mm. to aid us in survival. Mm -mm. Uh, we are able to survive. We are all survivors here, actually, because of technology. But as time goes by, uh, sometimes we tend to forget about us being the creator. And we are in some cases, especially in the globalized world today, we tend to forget that we're the ones responsible for creating technology. We just let technology do the things that uh, would make our lives easier and better, but unfortunately we became so reliant on technology that we cannot anymore function without, it. without technology. Uh, in sociology, we call that as reification. We have been reified, so meaning that technology is your world. If we get rid of technology, let's say, for example, if we will take your cell phone for one whole day, hmm. what will happen to you? <laughs> I feel so paralyzed, honestly. <laughs> Can you function properly? Of course not. So that's the thing about the reified world. You think your cell phone is your world, yeah. right? Mura siya uyabra, or sobra pagani usahay. Anak siya, so... We should never forget uh, that we are the ones responsible for technology. We have to, say uh, uh, we have to reassert ourselves again mm -hmm. that we built technology. Mm -mm. We can we construct the technology. We can deconstruct technology as well. Mm -mm. So in sociology and anthropology, we ventured or look into these realities mm -mm. and try to further understand what can we do to address such problems. Say, for example, the social media. How uh, immersed are you in social media? Very immersed. Very immersed. <laughs> oh. That your life, everything, yeah. Yeah. is From the just food that we eat. <clears throat> yeah. From the food. Before you will eat, you have to take pictures. Pictures. Yeah. Upload it to Instagram or Facebook. No, you put some filter first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. That's aesthetic. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, it. that's the question. You are living in what kind of world right mm. now? Mm -mm. Dominated by technology. This is some sort of an artificial world. And an artificial yeah. world controlled by technology. And it is in a certain way you feel that uh, you, you, you feel blessed to have all of these technologies when in fact you are actually being controlled. That's the, the, that's the siguro worst thing. You don't know that you are being controlled. Mm. Right. So there should be that's the scary part. There's, so we have there to should be, be like a cognizance, also mm. awareness, self-consciousness. Mm. Uh, punta naman natin ngayon ang ating mga um, kagawaran ng Filipino at Banyagang Wika. Paano po niyo po ginagamit ang teknolohiya upang isulong ang paggamit ng wikang Filipino? Um, actually, sa aming GE course, ito ay Sine Sociedad. Ito mm. ay pelikulang panlipunan. Wow. Sa subject na ito, ang uh, ginagamit namin ay yung mga documentaries, ah, okay. yes, yung mga 30-minute documentaries at um, eto ay ginagamit namin bilang kagamitang pampagtuturo at mula rito, um, magkakaroon ng 
pagsusuri ang mga mag-aaral. Ang mga dokumentaryong ito ay nakasentro sa iba't ibang isyong panlipunan na kinakaharap ng ating bansa. Right. Um, ang atake dito ay thematic. So, sa bawat linggo may mga tema, halimbawa um, kalikasan, so mga isyo na tungkol sa kalikasan, um, meron ding tungkol sa mga karapatang pambabae, so isinasulong din namin iyon, at meron ding mga dokumentaryo na pumapaksa tungkol sa um, kultura ng ating bansa, lalong-lalo na ang ating mga indigenous people. Mm-hmm. So, natatalakay rin natin yan. So, um, dito sa GE11, um, natatalakay hindi lamang ang pagsulong ng ating wika at kultura, pati na ang mga mahahalagang isyong panlipunan at kung paano makikisangkot ang ating mga mag-aaral. So, bahagi rin ng mga pagsusuri kung ano ang mga hakbang bilang mga mag-aaral na maari nilang maiambag bilang solusyon sa mga problemang ito. Josh, listening to Ma'am Jinaline, Sir John, and Ma'am Christine, it seems that I really like to enroll in the, uh, to this um, disciplines. Yeah, no? Even and, just some few, few courses, no? Yeah, to I mean, understand the world and the realities and yeah. you know, ourselves, no? So I'd like to ask, what are the admission requirements, especially for the students who are um, who are planning to en- mm-hmm. enroll yeah. sa College of Arts and, and Sciences? Especially that we just uh, had fresh graduates no, from the senior high school. Do you have interviews? Do, you, do, do they need to submit uh, essays? Uh, please walk Uh, walk with walk to us the process, ma'am. Uh, yes, if you are interested to up, to apply to be part of the Department of Anthropology and Sociology, uh, we actually it's open for everyone, but we have a preference for Hume students. But if you're not from Humes, uh, there are just uh, some little things that maybe perhaps we can talk about that during the interview. But the guidelines or the requirements. We actually ask for uh, an admission letter uh, mm-hmm. stating the reason why do you want to take up either anthropology or sociology and why did you choose Siliman? That's just a simple thing and please address that to our department. Uh, you can email that to socioanthro at su.edu.ph and once we have reviewed that, we will have a scheduled interview with the prospective student mm-hmm. And then the rest will just follow. Uh, for other admission requirements, you can actually contact either the registrar or just try to check the website of nice. City Man University or the Facebook yeah. uh, account. I think I'll be one of your students soon. <laughs> <laughs> How about in the history and political science, sir? Hmm. That's a tough one because the one I reviewed was actually outdated, but mm-hmm. I think I can let the prospective um, full size students to just refer to the website. And in case they can visit us at the department, our secretary and some of the teachers hanging out in the department are more than willing to you know, help out students. Yeah. Binibining Ginaline? Um, sa AB Filipino um, program naman, uh, lahat ng tracks ay tinatanggap. Okay. Uh, siguro meron lang na grade preference. So at least uh, 80% ang kanyang mm. Filipino subjects. Okay. So yung ibang mga requirements ay pwedeng itanong na lang sa registrars o maaring mag-email din sa filipino at su.edu.ph. Sige po. So, with that, maraming salamat po sa <laughs> pagtanong ng aming mga katanungan. We thank you so much for your time being with us. Mm-hmm. And we're going to do a fast talk. We're going to give you options that you don't have to, you know, think too hard about it. All right. Okay. So, let's begin with uh, Ma'am Christine. Ma'am Christine, Katipunan Hall or Ausejo Hall? Katipunan. <laughs> okay, Sir Katipunan. John, Catriona or Pia? Um, hmm... Pinag-iisipan <laughs> talaga. Um, who are they? Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, I thought I sir know. was uh, my girlfriend. <laughs> no, really, I, I don't know who, who, who those people are. are. Okay. okay. Sige. Ma'am, um, Jean, is it the beaches or the mountains? The beaches. Ma'am Teen, Facebook or Instagram? 
neither but <laughs> for the sake na lang instagram instagram okay, okay. uh sir barry eat or sleep sleep mini mm. bining ginaline tagalog or bisaya tagalog tagalog mm, okay. mampin email or chat chat sir john mornings or afternoons mornings mam jean speaking or writing writing Mam Teen, movies or series? Series? Sir John, field or office? Field. Mam Gina Lin, teleseria or K drama? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know? I think sa mga nagdang araw K drama. Mm, okay. Okay, Mam Teen, is it love or career? Career. <laughs> <laughs> Sir John, love or career? Love. Oh, no. that's romantic. romantic. Mom Jean. Love or career? Love. Love. Uh, <laughs> ako lang career. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Sir John, smartphone or laptop? Smartphone. Binibining Jinaling, books or e-books? Books. Mm -mm. Okay, this is the last one. You just have to complete the statement. Uh, Mom Jean, social anthro is all about society and culture. History and policy is research and policy. Filipino is ang Filipino ay tahanan ng iyong pagkakakilanlan. Oh, uh, tahanan. Pagkakakilanlan. <laughs> <laughs> so Josh, we are now at the last segment of our hashtag Siliman. Hashtag #WTP or words to ponder. Josh, what is your words to ponder or okay. word to ponder? Okay, word to ponder. Uh, we, we actually have like a very good discussion. Mm -mm. Um, I think... And 30 minutes is not enough. Yeah, mm -hmm. I wish we, we have another yeah, 30 minutes to, so short, to talk about it. But I think one thing that really uh, struck me this episode is the word relationship. You know, uh, it seems that our existence, although wala ko relationship, <laughs> but, but siguro, that's why I was able to ponder about it. Okay. But uh, we talk about relationship simply because I think that's really what makes our existent meaning, existence meaningful. Like you, ha you have to know your relationship with yourself. You have to have relationship with others, relationship with the environment, with your community, and of course with the Lord. Mm -mm. And the sharings of the different um, social sciences are very helpful, very yeah. important to make us understand this relationship. Mm. How about you, Ron? We are in the presence of experts from the humanities and social sciences in the field. And I'd like to ponder on the word human, say humanities, because I do believe that the root cause of the problem and the solution lies with the humanity. And I also like to um, associate, when we think of human, we, we always think of the things that we should do. What are the things that we need to pursue right. to have a pur purposeful life? But if we try to detach um, from those pressures um, that are given to us by, by ourselves and by society, we come to realize that the Lord, uh, God didn't want us or didn't ask us to be successful in the first place. He just want two things from us, to love Him and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. So, and, and it all boils down to the fact that we are not called human doings, but human beings. So why not just be? Josh. Right. Because, yeah, I agree. No? I mean, we are so obsessed of into becoming when in fact we are missing the point of into Me. just being. Right? Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you very much again, Assistant Professor Christine Batiles, Assistant Professor Jan Barin Wico, and of course, Assistant Professor Ginaline um, Aureliana. Maraming salamat po. And uh, we thank you for joining us and to God be the glory. Hey there, Silimanians! Dagang salamat for joining another episode of Hashtag Siliman. Please continue to support our Facebook page. It's called Hashtag Siliman. We also have a YouTube channel. It's called Hashtag Siliman. Please click the notification bell for you to be updated with our recent posts. See you there. And don't forget to catch us at Phil Products Channel 6 every Monday at 8 p.m. 
and replays will be shown every Tuesday before the Noontime News and Saturday after the Noontime News. This has been Rodeline Faith by Losses and Joshua Soldivillo. Keep the kids next week on the here on Hashtag Cinnamon! Bye!